Let me just tell you the story of how this all came to be. So once upon a time, it was New Year's Eve, I was sitting by the fire and I was feeling all visionary and goal oriented. I'm thinking through where I want to go. I had some big new ambitions. I had a couple slam dunk to do's. I had a brand new little baby. I had some very deep longings that I'd been carrying around for a few years. And then like some just life stuff, you know, pay off the credit card, get to Hawaii for the family vacation. I wanted to get a book deal. I got the book deal. Have more friends over for dinner, new kitchen table, laptop, lose the baby weight, get the garden happening finally. And so I sketched out some life areas. You'll become very familiar with these life areas just to kind of organize my life. I got out different colored markers. I highlighted the hot items, put little hearts, you know, extra little smiley faces, lovey things. And then when I stood back to look at my magnificent masterpiece of potential manifestation, um, I feel that inspired. I actually felt completely underwhelmed. And my thought was, this does not feel very sexy. And you should feel lit up and sexy when you think about your future. Lit up is a great starting point. I had no idea how revolutionary this question would become. How do I want to feel? Because I want to enjoy my life. How do I want to feel? Because I am free to choose. How do I want to feel? because the status quo definition of success does not take into consideration my soul, all of me. So I scrawled some feeling words on top of all of those wants and to do's. Uh, I wrote down freedom, abundance. I'm pretty sure I wrote down eco. It was all about green and mother earth and creative intimacy temple was another one. When I looked at that, everything started to feel like an invitation instead of another to-do list. So I curated those feeling words. And then, if we had a drum roll, we'd insert it here, I created the sticky note that would change everything. So I wrote down four feelings and I stuck it in my day planner. And I carried those words around with me for five years. I worked those feelings. I meditated with them. I made decisions based solely on trying to experience those feelings in everything I was doing. And I went deeper into the nature of desire. I had conversations with Buddhist lamas and rabbis and people I considered mystics about the nature of desire and enlightenment, about how our feelings influence our prayers and what we want. Uh, practically speaking, I polled a gazillion, at least a gazillion people on how they felt about goal setting and the answers were all over the map. I love it, I gotta have it, I need it, I hate it, want nothing to do with it. And then I built a goal setting methodology based on how you most want to feel. It's called the desire map. Then I went even deeper. I started to research the connection between emotions and brain chemistry. I designed workshops. I created a day planner system. And I was changing the way that I went after what I wanted. And so what I truly wanted started to become clearer. And I got much more aligned with my heart, my greatest source of clarity and compassion, my real power my heart. And evidently, that happened for a lot of other people. So, jump cut to here and now. I can't believe I get to say this. Over 200,000 people have worked through the desire map. And that's just in English. That's 200,000 people who know their core desired feelings. This process has been translated into 10 languages. There's a workshop and a coaching curriculum. There are hundreds of beautiful facilitators, hello facilitators, I love you, who are offering this work every week. Every week, somewhere in the world, there is a Desire Map event. Totally surreal and a little bit emotional to report all of this because New Year's Eve, just me and a sticky note in my hungry heart.